My name is Sarah Bostic, and I am the Sustainable Agriculture Extension Agent with the University of Florida, um, and I serve in both DeSoto and Sarasota counties. Um, and um, I recognize a couple of your names on there, um, but if any of you are from further afield and don't know where those counties are, um, we are on the, the southwest coast of Florida, about, about two thirds of the way down the state. So today's topic is just going to be a really, um, really concrete look at, at the rules and regulations about beekeeping in Florida. And this is really specific to Florida. Um, every state has rules and regulations around beekeeping, um, but this, this is the Florida rules. So here we go. It's, it's relatively dry because it is rules and regulations. Um, and sorry about that. That's not usually my style, um, but that's what we've got um, for you today. So just to frame it a little bit, um, you know, I'm, I see one of you has a picture, um, of your, I'm guessing yourself um, as a beekeeper. So, you know, some of you might already be really aware of how big Florida's honey industry is and, and bee industry. Um, and some of you might not. Um, honey actually, Florida actually produces close to 11 million pounds of honey every year. That's a lot of honey. Um, and that has a total value of um, around $26 million. So it's a really big industry. It's a really big part of the agriculture industry in our state. Um, and, that's, and that's just, you know, the, 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 val the actual economic value very tangibly of what bees produce. The hidden value in that is that bees are responsible for um, a huge amount of the pollination that happens across the rest of our agriculture industry. So bees are really essential. Um, this is just a really neat little infographic to show you how many colonies um, are in the different counties around the state. Um, and so you can see actually the two counties that I primarily work in down here, Sarasota County and DeSoto County, we have relatively few hives, um, but we are still, we definitely do still have hives. So now we're now we're diving in um, to the to the really um, to the really dry part of of um, working with bees, which is um, things written into law. So the first the first thing that's important to know is um, when you're actually reading through some of the laws that are written around beekeeping in Florida, um, that there's actually a definition of three different basically tiers of of beekeeping. So when you start to read through some of those rules and regulations, you will see the terms backyard beekeeper, sideline beekeeper, and commercial beekeeper. And um, in Florida, um, a backyard beekeeper is anyone who has uh, 40 or fewer colonies or hives. A sideline beekeeper has between 41 and 100 and a commercial beekeeper has over 100 colonies. Um, in that, the commercial beekeeper um, it can be kind of confusing because, you know, for many people, they would define, many people define commercial as you sell it, right? If you sell honey, then you're, you have a commercial product. But for the purpose of the law, just remember that the commercial beekeeper um, uh, name basically is for anyone who has over a hundred bee colonies. So the, De the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services is the division of our state government that regulates pretty much everything having to do with agriculture, um, plants, animals, things like that. So within the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, there is a division called the Division of Plant Industry. And then within that department or division is, um, is something called the Bureau of Plant and Apiary Inspection. Um, apiary meaning bees. So this particular bureau within the division of the Florida Department of Agriculture annually inspects all of the colonies in the state. Um, and they do that to monitor for pests and unwanted types of bees. And, you know, so some, some people really see that as government being invasive, um, you know, kind of getting, sticking their nose in places where maybe you'd rather it not be. But the reason that they do that, and the reason that it's so important that they do that is that they're protecting um, the state's bees, and they're protecting the state's bee industry, um, but also just um, truly the health of, um, of bees within the state of Florida, um, because there's some really serious pests and diseases out there. And it's really important to have um, and some unbiased eyes take a look at colonies all over the state every year. 
So the, the process of actually um, being a permitted beekeeper in Florida is quite simple and quite inexpensive, um, which is a pretty wonderful thing. Um, so the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services requires that um, regardless of the number of hives that you have, um, you have an annual application and a small fee. Um, the fee ranges from just 10 to $100, depending on the number of hives that you have. The annual application is, is short and pretty simple. They require an annual inspection. And as part of that inspection, um, they, they require that you as the beekeeper maintain an area right um, around that hive and leading up to the hives that you have so that the inspector can easily access it without having to you know, bushwhack through a jungle of weeds and vines and grasses and things like that. So really maintaining the area around your hive and getting to the hive is part of the requirement. And then each hive also has to um, be labeled with a registration number. Um, and I will send out some information about exactly what that what that looks like um, on your hives, but um, but that's that's kind of it. That that really, in a nutshell, is what is required in terms of um, being being a licensed permitted beekeeper in Florida. And even if you have just one hive, these are the same steps that you have to go through. Um, I will send out links to everything, um, but if you want to do your own searching, also um, you can type in those three words: Florida beekeeper registration, and the correct forms will pop right up. So if you are keeping bees on non-agricultural land, or um, another way to say that is if your land does, um, it does not have um, an agricultural classification, and most land in Florida doesn't, um, then your, um, your, um, your apiaries or your, your hives have to be um, maintained with European honeybee colonies um, as described in this thing called the Beekeeper Compliance Agreement. Um, and so that's another link that I will share, share with you afterwards um, via email. Um, so that's one of the requirements if you have bees on a non-agricultural land um, is that you, you keep your bees as described in the Beekeeper Compliance Agreement. Another is that all of your hives have to have movable frames you have to be able to actually move the frames in your hive. So those are really two pretty, pretty simple requirements for keeping bees on non-agricultural land. And there's a, a few more um, layers to um, keeping bees on non-agricultural land. So I'm gonna go, gonna go through them in just a cut and dry, really linear way. Um, so when a colony is located within 15 feet of a property line, you need to build a six foot, um, called a flyaway barrier that's parallel to your property line. And so the reason for that is that when bees fly out of their hive, they, they generally are flying kind of at body level, right? Like at our human body level. And by building a six foot tall barrier um, near, the, near the hive, that forces the bees really quickly to, to actually fly up over the heads of human beings. And so that's part of just making sure that um, your bees are not going to become a problem for a neighbor or somebody that's walking by. Um, and um, you don't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have to be a structure that you put up. Um, it can be a really dense hedge that they can't fly through. It just has to be at least six feet tall. And then all, um, all of the properties or part of the property that your colonies are located on have to have a barrier that's built around them just to keep people out. Um, it's really important that, you know, in the middle of the night, you don't have um, people that, you know, stumble their way in or think it would be funny to pull a prank or something like that and mess with your bees. So you actually have to have some sort of um, kind of gated barrier around your hives if you're in a non-agricultural land um, to prevent any kind of intentional or unintentional disturbance around your hives. And then, um, you cannot, cannot have colonies or your hives on public land except by special permit. And that permit is issued by the director of the division of plant industry. And you have to have written consent of the property owner. So places that you sometimes will see beehives that actually have to have this special permit um, are things like public lands, um, like, like parks or schools or, um, you know, a county owned facility, things like that. So it is possible. You just have to have two layers of permission 
um, in, in there. So there's also some rules about um, how many hives you can have on non-agricultural land. If you are producing, if you have bees on land that is actually um, used for other agricultural purposes and has that classification on the books um, wherever you live, um, there's not a, a maximum number of hives you can have. But on non-agricultural land, there is. So if you live on a quarter acre or less, you can actually have um, three beehives on your, on your quarter acre or less. Um, and then you can see it, it goes all the way up to 100 colonies um, for, for acreage that is um, for properties that are 10 acres or more. And, um, and basically, if, if you have, um, so swarm, for anyone who doesn't know what a swarm is, um, so you can see that column that says, as swarm control can increase the number of colonies, a, um, a swarm is when bees um, in mass leave their hive and go search for another home. Um, and a lot of beekeepers will actually capture that swarm of bees and, and rehome them back into a, um, a hive on their own property. So if you do need to be doing some swarm control, um, you can have basically double the number of allowable colonies on your property, but no more than 60 days. So you'll have to move them somewhere else um, within a couple of months after capturing a swarm. So there are a few more non-agriculture land rules. Um, and you'll notice that most, most of these rules have to do with land that is not already productive agricultural land. Um, so this is you know, mostly geared towards people who are you know, homeowners or, and live in either an urban or rural area, but are not also farming that land. So those additional rules are um, that you have to provide a convenient source of water for your bees. And that really is just to make sure that bees are not using water sources that are gonna cause a problem, like your neighbor's kiddie pool or a bird bath or something like that in one of your neighbor's properties. Um, you, you actually have to visually inspect all of your colonies um, to make sure that their health is okay. And you have to do that at least once a month. And then you are, you are required by state law to contact your assigned um, apiary inspector or, or hive inspector um, if, your bee, if your bees appear to be um, unusually aggressive. Um, you are required to actually report that. And then um, if you do happen to have, um, need to requeen your colony for any reason, um, you have to requeen them with European honeybee bee queens. Um, it's really important to maintain that, that strain um, because we do indeed have some, um, some varieties of bees in our state um, that, are, that can be quite aggressive and can cause some problems. Um, and then you also have to practice reasonable swarm prevention techniques. Um, and the way to learn about what those reasonable swarm prevention techniques are is um, a University of Florida document called Swarm Control for Managed Beehives. Um, that is the actual document that the Florida Department of Agriculture um, requests that everyone um, read who has beehives and to follow the, follow the guidance in that document. It's also um, state law that um, if you're on non-agricultural land, you cannot place your hives within 150 feet of animals that um, have confined movement of any sort. So like a goat that's tethered to a pole or chickens in a coop, things like that, have to be at least 150 feet away from your hives. Same, same setback, 150 feet for um, hives in public places. Um, or, or near public places where people um, are, are frequently interact with that space. So things like you have to be at least 150 feet away from um, public parking lots, um, parks, unless you get that special variance, um, from schools, daycares, any of those sorts of things where there's often lots of people. Um, you have to keep, keep those bees at least 150 feet away, um, unless it's a public land that you have special permission from the Department of Agriculture and the property owner. Um, it's really important um, and, and state law um, to not place your hives in an area that will get in the way of emergency workers um, who are trying to access entrances to buildings and properties. So think about it in terms of um, if, if um, you know, uh, an ambulance has to come and, and 
um, get someone from a building, um, making sure that your um, that your bees are not going to get in the way of um, emergency workers actually bringing someone out of a building without somebody getting stung. And then um, there are um, various neighborhoods and HOAs and even um, municipalities may have some extra restrictions in place. Um, it might be a deed restriction, like a deed restricted a HOA that doesn't allow, um, doesn't allow for bees or um, covenants or municipality rules and things like that. Um, those actually do take precedence over the state laws. Um, so you have to make sure that you're following both the state law um, and then any kind of you know, really local law or restriction or covenant that you might um, have in place where you live. And, and one, one other note too, is you don't actually have to have your bees on your own property. Um, you, can, you can make a partnership of some sort with, with somebody else that has land and put bees on their land, um, but you are the one who's really responsible for making sure that you're following all the, all the state laws. Okay, so there are also um, rules and regulations about selling honey in Florida. Um, so there's the best way to think about this is to break it into two different categories. If you are selling directly to the person who is going to be eating the honey, um, AKA the end consumer, um, that's how you'll often see it written um, when you start doing research, it's end consumer. Think of end consumer as the person who's actually gonna eat that product. So if you are selling directly um, to the end consumer, then you can, um, you can actually sell raw, not pasteurized, but raw honey directly to um, the end user um, under something in the state of Florida called the cottage food law. Um, but you have to be the one to take care of the bees, um, do all the harvesting, all the bottling, and the selling yourself. And I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about cottage food law in just a second. Um, there's lots of information online, um, including, um, I actually just taught a class a few weeks ago on the cottage foods law, um, and I address honey in it. Um, and if you're interested to know more about that, I can also share the link um, to that class recording. So um, if you want to go bigger than that though, um, you know, beyond selling to the end consumer or directly to that customer who's gonna eat it, um, you may be someone who's interested in doing something like wholesale or mail order honey sales. Um, those, that, that product would have to be produced in a Florida Department of Agriculture permitted kitchen. Um, so that's a whole, whole another can of worms. Um, it is absolutely possible. There's many people who do it, um, but that comes with a lot more, a lot more rules and regulations than selling directly to the end consumer. And I think I saw um, a question pop up. Let me see. And yes, um, I will indeed share a copy of this PowerPoint. I also have um, a resource list that I share with folks via email. Um, so I will send both of those out, hopefully later today. Um, and if I run out of time today, I'll send it all out tomorrow. And um, yep, and I will definitely send out links on cottage food and things like that. Um, and if you're interested in, um, in a um, in real time cottage foods class, uh, I think in the either this weekend or next weekend, um, a coworker and I are also doing another, another virtual live version of the class. Um, but if you wanna just listen on your own time, then I can share that link. Okay, so the, the very basics of that cottage food law in Florida that allows you to sell raw honey directly to your end consumer um, is, um, you know, there, there's many things other than honey you can sell under that law. Um, but for the purposes of honey, um, it's important to know that um, you, you can only sell raw honey. Um, your annual sales of, of all your cottage food products combined have to be under $50,000. Um, that's actually a, an amazing um, cap on, on annual sales. There's um, a lot of states have some sort of cottage food law um, and Florida's is actually quite high compared to most states. Um, so that's pretty, pretty neat thing for people who are interested in, in um, producing cottage foods such as raw honey. Um, there's really specific labeling requirements under the law. Um, and one of those things is that you cannot make any health claims with your product. You know, so if you, if you happen to be someone who um, wants to sell raw honey and really do a lot of proclaiming about the health benefits, you can do that verbally, but you can't put it on the label. 
And then there's no licenses, no, no license permit um, required training, kitchen inspection, or fees associated with the cottage foods law. So as long as you are following the law, um, then you're, you're good to go. For some reason my screen will not switch to the next slide. There we go. Okay, so that's really the bulk of what you need to know about um, the rules and regulations of producing honey in the state. Um, they're, they're pretty, um, they're, they're pretty minimal, streamlined, straightforward, um, you know, they're, and they're really reasonable, which is a pretty, pretty wonderful thing that we get to work with. Um, so if you, have, um, if you are unfamiliar with it, I'm gonna share a handful of resources that are, that are really neat in our state. One of those is the University of Florida Honey Bee Research and Extension Lab. It's a, um, a new building on campus up in Gainesville that houses the Honey Bee Research Team. Um, it's a really neat, very small team of people and it is a very neat research facility. If you ever get a chance to actually go up and check it out, I highly recommend it. Um, one of the ways that you can do that um, once we can start doing things in person again um, is that the, um, the, that the bee lab puts on a number of, of um, programs every year, some of which are always in person, some of which are um, always online, some of which are a hybrid between the two. But a few of the programs they put on are the Master Beekeeper Program, um, which I am actually in the process of taking right now, which is really a truly amazing program. Um, I'm in the very early stages of this program, um, but it, um, it, it's, it's incredible and it goes on for many, many months. Um, you will learn a huge amount. Um, Bee College is one that has traditionally been offered in person on campus at the Bee Lab um, in Gainesville. And I have heard nothing but absolutely rave reviews about it um, from tons and tons of people. Um, and then another is something that I have never never heard of before, before I started working for the University of Florida. And um, you can actually um, take a Welsh honey judging um, training program. Um, and then there's also an annual honey show. So I, I was so enticed by this Welsh honey judging program um, that, um, that I ended up doing lots and lots of research on it because I was just so fascinated. Um, so here's, um, this is just a screenshot of the actual website of the Welsh honey judging program that the University of Florida puts on. Um, and it, it teaches you basically this time honored tradition of, um, from, from Wales in the UK um, of judging honey. And so this is a gorgeous, gorgeous picture of some of the entries that are being um, being uh, that were being judged a few years ago as part of the the honey um, the honey ju honey judging contest in the Welsh judging style. So I just I love ending with that picture because it is just so beautiful, um, and hopefully it inspires you to um, tap into some of the amazing resources that the University of Florida has around um, producing honey. So. That's what I've got for you today. Um, it's short and sweet. Um, it's always great when rules and regulations are short and sweet and it just so happens that they are in Florida. <laughs>